From poor villages and fallow fields of southern China, they came and saw this, a land so vast and splendid, beyond their wildest dreams. The crops to be raised so abundant, they would take many clans of their people to harvest. Their success created tension among the whites. The Chinese became easy targets for violence and theft. They needed a place where they could live safely, some place to buy provisions, to receive their mail from their families abroad, a home base, a Chinatown. But the angry white labor movement was gaining momentum, and politicians took the lead. Chinese were seen as a threat to American society and became a scapegoat for hard economic times. Two months after the fire, a group of Chinese merchants signed a contract with John Heinlein, a German-born landowner. A friend to the Chinese, Heinlein leased five and a half acres of his pasture land for a new Chinatown in San Jose. After 1885, the government of Japan began to allow their citizens to emigrate. Young men, hearing reports of good wages in a new land, eagerly sailed for California. When the first Japanese arrived in San Jose, they had no place to stay but Chinatown. The Japanese came without money or provisions. They needed everything from rice to tools. Dakwa was the first Chinese store to extend credit to Japanese, and other businesses followed suit. Even though they spoke a different language and had different customs, they were welcomed. The Heinlein Company leased property to these new immigrants. With a growing population, Japanese merchants began opening their own establishments. There were stores and community halls, a Japanese language school, a Japanese Methodist Episcopal Church, and a Buddhist temple. The Chinese and Japanese lived side by side. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii by air, President Roosevelt has just announced. December 7th, 1941. The attack on Pearl Harbor by Imperial Japan. America was at war. Treated as enemies by their own country, Japanese Americans had three days to pack up and report to evacuation centers before being sent off to internment camps. Japantown business owners and farmers relied on help from friends and neighbors to watch over their property. When Executive Order 9066 was rescinded in 1945, Japanese began trickling back to San Jose, and merchants returned to their stores, though many of them were empty and boarded up. The trickle turned into a flood as three times as many Japanese arrived as had left during the evacuation. They came because of the harvest. There were jobs and they came back because San Jose was more welcoming than anywhere else.